Welcome to Clearview Outdoors. Once again, we're giving God the praise, thankful that we're able to bring you another video, doing something a little different with the reels this time. No abus, but a couple of pins. We got a pin squall, 20 with line counter, and then a pin fathom two. These blows both belong to the old muskrat. But uh, I'm not so sure there's what all's wrong with these. I don't think there's anything really wrong. Um, he's just had them a long time and needs them cleaned up, I believe. So we're gonna we're gonna tear into them, clean them up. We're gonna try to take these apart, lay out the parts so that we don't get them mixed up, and we should be able to just put it right back together after we get it cleaned and uh, get some new grease and oil in there. Like I say, I've never done a pin. <clears throat> the only thing I've ever worked on is abus. So we're about to find out. Um, I think I'll go with the squall first because it's cheaper than the pin or the uh, fathom. I believe the fathoms are really expensive, but I'm not sure. I always call this the easy side and that's the hard side. Um, I think I'm going to, usually I always like starting at the easy side. But since we're going to be completely disassembling this, I think I am going to go with the harder side first. The reason I call it the harder side is it's got a lot more gears and parts usually than this side does. <clears throat> so let's just uh, get into it here. First off, we've got a flathead screw right here. And we'll... That wasn't on there very, or you know, it, that had a little bit of snugness to it. It was like right there. That is different. That's our handle. There's something right there. I don't know if that comes out. It stays in there. Aha, it does come out. See that right there? So we know that that goes there. That'll go there. Oh wow, I never did notice that. It looks like you can actually move your handle up and then the screw still locks in the nut. That would actually give you more I would think that would give you more cranking power, right? Huh, very interesting. And that there is familiar. That's just like on an Abu. That's something I do like about the, you know, some of the other reels is how they get that clickiness with that and your line tensioner, your spool tensioner. I can hear the crud in there. When I was unscrewing that, I could hear, as you can see, it's pretty dirty in there. There's that part. So I have to remember the, how that goes on, just like that. Wow, a lot of series of washers here. See, that's got a bevel in it. So put it down, put everything down that goes in. Got a couple more washers here, they just look flat to me. Nope, they are beveled. They're beveled against each other. I'm just going to leave those together. That way I know that's the way they go. Alright, that looks like that's it for there. If I go ahead and take this cap off. There's a spindle.
don't think I'll take that off yet. I may eventually. I'm going to wait till I get these other screws out to make sure. Oh. Well, there's something we got to keep an eye on. See, that screw is really short. This one's longer. If the two top ones are long and the two bottom ones are short, that'd be great. Okay, three long ones, one short one. That holds this ring on. Okay, it looks like we are going to have to go ahead and take that off. These ones back here off. Just got two more screws right here. I know one thing, these screws are really snug. These have a different thread, it's like a coarser thread than the other one, so that should help. I'm gonna go to put it back together. It's like a really tiny screw right there. I wouldn't think that, that would have to come off, but it's kind of looking like maybe it does. Yeah, that's what's holding it. You feel it coming loose? Talk about a tiny screw. the inside of that there's a little gear that works the uh, line counter it's very different I was kind of expecting a little more dirt in there it's not really that bad they got it really heavily greased oil So there is that. I set this here. Okay, so we got another little washer. Goes right there. There's a sleeve. That's for the anti reverse bearing. Here's the main gear. They do have some massive gears on them. That's very similar to the uh, Abus. Some massive drags too. Like they looks like they run them wet. Man, there's a lot of grease. A lot of grease around. There's some dirt fall, falling out. Another drag. 
thing. Not sure what holds that on there. there and another little drag washer it's part of the drag just like that there's the anti reverse dog I believe that's what they call it that so got two screws that hold the spindle in go start us another row there that is oh it's got a bearing right there too it's got a little keeper spring on it so, we're going to pop that off. Got to watch those little keeper springs. They will fly on you. Got lucky with that one. And the reason why I'm going to do that, I'm going to put that bearing. Um... That's actually not a bearing. It's just like a. It's just brass. But I want to be able to clean that good. Re grease it. Okay, we got some springs. We got two little springs there. We'll take those off. And this here, I believe, yep, that's your. I'd say that that actually snaps down in there. And it, or it just lays in there. So that, that, oops. Thing's pretty greasy. And we got one more little metal piece down in there. it for that now there is another one of those little keeper washers on this here and that is the the drive big gear must help run that Magnet comes in handy. Just about. Okay, so we get that off. That little gear, a little plastic gear there. See, I want to get that good and clean so I can make sure it's not chewed up or anything. Okay, that takes care of that side. There's nothing else in there. Yeah. So, evidently that's how you take the whole worm gear out. See on Abu, it's on the other side. That's just your little cap. For your pole, the pole that goes inside of the. Oh, that's nice. It's brass. Abus are stainless. Oh, that's got some wear on it. This 
sleeve. Okay, we're not going to be able to get the rest of the gear out until we take... We're not going to be able to get the worm gear out until we take this side off. So... Okay, those three are all the same size. Get the metal ring. There's the whole part. Pretty dirty on that side. Yuck. So, that worm gear. Oh, wow. Well, the, uh, this rail here just popped out. The line guide that worked for the top. It just kind of popped out. Worm gear. Ooh. A lot of nasties. It's another one of those little plastic uh, pieces. Got like a little slot that it fits in. Don't look like it comes off. Yeah, that's just it's fixed. That's fixed right there. It don't come off. But we can still clean it, get some oil back in there behind it. Alright, there's that. There's the spool. Thought maybe that threaded but it doesn't oh it's all fixed that's all fixed that spindle that gear the gear or that bearing looks like it has a like a retention clip yeah I think I'm gonna leave that alone I got some uh, brake cleaner. I'll just spray that out. Spray it out real good after I wash it. And then uh, just re oil it. Got another clip, a little C clip. A little bigger. Okay. Enough grease on that thing, it wasn't gonna fly nowhere. Gets that off of there. That way we can clean it up good. sure if that's another if that's a bearing it might be another bearing right there felt washer yeah there's a bearing there's a bearing and something else in there it's like a little brass uh, Um, <laughs> spacer, I guess. Be like a spacer. Okay, that takes care of that. This here is just the clicker. I don't think I'm going to take that loose. I'm just going to clean it. So there we have it. That was 
what I'll do when I go to wash this. I just use a bowl of soapy Dawn soapy water and a bowl of hot uh, rinsing water. And I'm just going to do each piece in order. I got another tray. I'll do each piece in order and lay it right back out in order. That way I should go be able to go reverse. Do this row, then that row, then that row, and then that row. So, we will see. Okay, here we go. Everything is clean. Um, I did uh, look at the footage and notice this last row. That it was kind of out of frame, so I tried to readjust the camera. I hope I got it all in there now. Right here in the frame. There's a bearing down in there. I did not take that out. I uh, cleaned it with some uh, brake cleaner. And we're just going to put, um, this is kind of a big bearing. Usually I only put like a drop, but I think I might put two on this one. It's a, sorry about the camera shake, it's, it's a pretty good size bearing. Just let that oil soak down in there and then we'll put the uh, spool back in there's the spool we're going to set this aside for a minute all right so in the frame, you, you might not have been able to see this spacer when I was taking it apart. Try to get you a good look at it here. It's just a real flat little uh, brass spacer. And it goes right down in there. It's nice and it's just like it's made for it. And then we're going to have our other bearing. Goes in there. We'll put a drop of the high speed oil in there. Yeah, I don't think I quite got it in the right place. Okay. And then there's like a flat washer. Or it's actually like a little felt. It's like a little piece of felt washer. That goes over top of that. Just like that. And we have this here. There's like a place for the screw and then two little nubs. So it's pretty... Kind of locks in right there. Sometimes these little screws can be very tedious. And I just had a cup of coffee. <laughs> Snug that up. Then we put our our gear. Now, as I'm going to do here, I'm going to use some. Uh, Just some of the uh, now the the stuff I was putting in the bearings is that TSI 321. It's actually a bearing oil. You get that from uh, Smooth Drag. This here is just uh, Lucas fishing reel oil. Really good. Really high recommended. Um, you can get that on Amazon. But I'm going to. A little bit, <clears throat> put a little bit on this shaft, just a couple little drops. Also, going to you see how that clicker is. There's like little shafts right there. We'll put one on there, one on there, 
We'll go ahead and put our gear on. Now our keeper clip. Sometimes these can be challenging. It's nice to get a get a little screwdriver. Just pop that in. Pretty free. Okay. So as you can see, this gear and this gear, yeah, they they work together. So now we're going to put a little grease on them, and we're just using uh, just marine grade grease, just like you put in your uh, bearings of your uh, trailer. Grease that gear right there up. Now there's a lot of different preferences on how much grease. Some guys like oil. I talked very extensively to a guy that owns a real cleaning business. I've actually he's even got a few videos out I've watched those extensively and uh, I just kind of follow his recommendations I figure he's got a very su successful business people send him reels from all over the United States and probably parts of the world and uh, he's got a very good reputation so I trust his judgment. I'm going to put some on this one here. The thing I'm trying to do is just get it down inside the teeth. And then, you know, a lot of times I'll wipe the, ex the excess off. Some guys just like, you know, for guys that's trying to get distance casting. You know, a lot of times they'll just use straight up oil and everything. Because they feel that the grease slows things down. <clears throat> Myself and uh, a lot of the guys I fish with, we think we're more interested in longevity and uh, just making sure our equipment is ready to to operate. You know, ready to work. Bring in those fish. I say I'll just kind of dab off that excess, but you know I've got grease in the teeth, and that's what's that's what's matter, or that's what matters. And I might not need to do this on this side since they're going to be connecting anyway, but I am going to put a little bit. These two now these big teeth they're just for the clicker, so I'm not really too worried about them. There's some on that other one, so. This here's what this gear here and this these other gears. It's what ends up turning your worm gear and your spool and or you know it all works together. We're gonna grease up this uh, worm gear. The same thing. I'm just gonna try to get it down into the teeth into the uh, grooves. And then I'll wipe the excess off. See, the thing about, you know, a lot of guys like using oil here, but you have to remember to oil, you know, like, if you're using it extreme like we do, probably once a month or better. You know, we we don't think about that when we're, we get a chance to go fishing we're we just want our stuff to be ready to go so myself i'd just rather have it 
a good working order. See there? I wipe that off, but the each one of them grooves has got you know plenty of grease in it. Maybe a little bit right there, but you know it's going to work its way where it needs to go. I don't know if you see it or not, but there's like a these are a little different than Abu's. This little thing right here, it's kind of like a triangle with a rounded butt. But right in there, there's a there's a space for it. So, you know, that there will go right in there. There's little notches on each end of this worm gear. They have to go a certain way. That This big hole here, it's got to go down. So, I had it actually backwards. I think it goes this way. So let's try this again. Oh yeah, see it fit in there a lot better that time. And then this side should fit in better. Yep. Locked right locked right in. Oh. But I forgot something. <laughs> forgot the uh line guide. those now we get this little gear right here so did you see that there that little gear little plastic gear so see you hold you're holding it with this one and then you got that there locked in put that little gear on and then we got another one of those little keeper now this one's probably going to be tricky because i gotta hold the other side while i get this on there oh got lucky it popped right in on with my finger now so wasn't that hard okay so see now that that there is all locked in now we should be able to put our top piece in there that is so there's our line guide now i'm going to put the paw in so we'll put that in there Put the put the cap on. Snug it up so that there's back in working order. Put our spool in. So put our end cap on. Get it lined up. Once you get it lined up, it goes right in there. Then we'll put our ring back on. Put our screw. 
screws in. Sorry about the dogs. Sorry about the background noise. Those dogs are my alarm clock, or my security alarm. Anybody comes around, you know it. So there's that side back together. All right. Okay. So now we've got this piece here. It just lays right in there. Kind of line it up with these uh, posts. Then this one here. So you got the the pinion gear. It's going to go like that right there. I think we're going to put a little grease down in there, down in that slot. And of course, we'll grease this gear too. I just want to get that in there. And also, I think I'm going to put some oil. I should have done that before I put that in. Down here on the spindle, a little drop down in there. This is going. See, there's a uh, there's a notch on that spindle gear right there. And you see in there, that's where that, that slides right down into that. So you got to line that up. And it'll fall down in it. So we got those. And we got the two springs. <clears throat> okay. So now we're going to put our spindle back. And uh, we'll put a little drop of oil on that. Right there. Put this piece here on. Put that brass uh, spacer, I guess is what you'd call it, in your little keeper. Got lucky and got that back on with the. fingernail so right there goes right in there like that we got our two little two little screws here okay so we got that back so you gotta have these gear this gear turned the right way I believe it goes like this See how the teeth are. So you put that down on there. Because the anti reverse dog paw or gear that slides in there like that. So see it. It allows your handle to go one way, but then it'll catch it. So, you know, we're able to turn to reel in, but you can't reel backwards. Once that's all together, that's how it works. Then this washer here. It goes down on, it catches on that little, e that notch. Okay, now we're going to be putting our drag back together. So I'm going to use some cow's drag grease. And 
And the best way to do it is just use your finger. So you put a light coat on this washer here. I just get it on my fingers and then just rub it in. Just got a light coat on there. That'll go down over that one. Actually, take that back. It'll go on the back of this. There's a place for it. And then we'll slide that down. And we'll just, sorry about the camera shake. <laughs> just do up these other ones. Just like a series of uh, stacking them together. You have a felt or a carbon fiber. But, you know, you just want to get a, a light coat on there. You don't want it real heavy. You can kind of see it. Um, get into the pores of this. That's just kind of what you're wanting to do. Just get in the pores, then wipe the excess away. So that goes down in there. Then you do a flat one. Those, those only go on one way. It's almost like you can see it turn collar whenever it fills in those little pores. It goes from a um, shinier look to a dull look. That's how I usually tell that I've got, got it good. Another flat one. Another felt one. And uh, I debated on these. <clears throat> I was going to get a hold of Roger and see if he wanted to change them. Uh, th this one here shows just a little bit of wear, but the other two look really good. And uh, I think they're going to be fine. These things have an incredible amount of drag anyway, I do believe. Like 30 pound or something there like insane so there's that one then your uh, see that one's got a little bevel on it and it goes up so there's that so now I want to get some grease on the gears Use the uh, actually shut that dry grease, just the marine grease. So I'm gonna hold that thing there while I do this. You know, it's same same principle. We want to get it in the teeth inside the the teeth. springs I don't think it really matters on those let me get some on the main gear here everybody's got their own preference you know like I said earlier I just go off of what I've learned from others and this is the way I do it As you can see, there's plenty building up there, I do believe. Let's go ahead and let that kind of work that in. Now we can 
get a little bit of that access off because we don't want to get it up there in our drag. You know, we don't need it up there. We already got the cows on there. So just get a little bit of the access off. That should be good to go. Now this here is your sleet or your uh, spindle spacer. See, it's got a that same notch as like the washers had. And then up here on this end it doesn't. But that this side needs to go down. Like that. Okay, and then this one here goes here. That's on there. Before I forget to, I want to get a little bit of grease on this um, worm gear. Okay, now we're ready to put the side plate back on. Now, see this is your uh, where you engage your reel, right? So see that, I don't know if you can see how that's switching. And then there's that little groove. Right here. See that's what frees your spool. So, we have to get that. Oh, before we do that though, we want to get some grease in the anti reverse bearing. I just take, rub that around in there. I've heard a lot of mixed talk about too much grease in it. You just want a light coat. So I always, you know, put that in there and then take a Q-tip and just kind of get the ex excess off. So you got several things you got to line up. You got the spindle. It's got to line up with that. That bearing... You know what? I think I might have done that wrong. So remember when we uh, put this spindle thing, um, the sleeve that goes over the spindle, we'll stick it inside the bearing first. See there. And then you can line up line that up then it's easier to line your spindle up so we got that together so there's that and we still got this little washer here that goes down on there first Get some of our screws back together here now if we remember there's two these two longer ones they go right here we're going to do those first okay we get this real little screw right here say I'm gonna go back through and do all the screws over so 
So we'll go ahead and put our plate on. I think that's really just for show. So the three longer ones go in here, and these three. And we have a shorter one that goes over here. These ones are good. Okay. We put our cap on. It's actually your spool tensioner. It's got like a uh, rubber. Uh, ring right there so you gotta watch that it kind of try to tries to throw you off thread but once you get it lined up it's good then we want to do our gauge disengage lever the big screw crank I don't know if you all noticed it in the um, when I was disassembling this I when I took this cap off I dropped it it landed here and I didn't notice but this little piece had actually flew out and landed up in here and then later on I was like where in the heck's that piece go well it goes right down in there so it doesn't it looks like it doesn't matter which way it goes it's the same on both sides it's just tension uh, like a little tension spring type thing so that I'll have to go in there and like I say there's that rubber o-ring you kind of got to get it started over that or it'll try to cross thread you said it didn't matter see that's what also makes your little clicking noise so maybe it does matter let's look at that a little closer they look identical though try it that way it is so it does matter so you just have to make sure that you put it in you know the way that you hear that clicking <laughs> glad I got that figured out huh <laughs> okay so now so also when I was taking them out you know, these two are beveled together or against each other. See, they both have a bevel in them. I hope you can see that. The bevels go against each other like that. And they go down on there. And then this one has a bevel also. And I laid it down just like that. So I know that it goes back on there just like that. Yeah, that one goes on there. That's what makes that clicking noise. Before I stick that on there, though, I am going to put a little bit of grease on these threads. And on that wire. 
washer, those washers. It's not going to, I don't feel that it's going to hurt anything. So we got him on there. I want a little bit of grease because of the So what makes the clicking noise is that little thing there. So now we start our star star lever on. There goes the clicking. Compress those drags down and back it back off. Okay, and then we got this uh, oval washer and it's got bevels, they go down. Get that one there on. Then in the back of your handle, this washer here goes in there. Yeah, I think I'm going to put just a little bit of dabs of grease on there. That way it'll kind of stick. And <clears throat> I want to mention this again. I think I mentioned it before. You can actually move this here where I guess it would give you a little more cranking leverage. I want to put it back the way it was, but I want to make sure Roger knows that. And I actually seen this on Joe Granada's, uh, I believe it was, uh, he used this pen. And some of them he had in the middle, but I noticed that it looked like one he did have up there. And I don't know if that's because of the different size reels that he done that or what. But uh, just interesting. Um, so, put that on there. see in the set screw works for either one so that's kind of cool but I'll leave that up to Roger I mean that's an easy is all you'd have to do oh wow I even washed that and that did not come off it's like a little plastic washer wow but uh I just think that's very interesting I think I'd like to try, or, you know, if I had these reels, I'd definitely want to try it. And this wasn't, like, super cranked up, so we're just going to get it good and snug. Get that. It's the last screw we got right here. Goes in there. That just kind of locks that nut in. I got him now. Let's use that smaller one. There it is. Feels really smooth. Line counter is working. Everything seems to be good order. But we'll let Roger uh, give us the final. The final rundown on it. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to mess with that line counter. I mentioned it. 
it's got a couple screws here, but you know, it's uh, it seems to be working just right. It looked like to me it was just all plastic stuff, so I don't think it needs any grease or any oil or greasing. I think it's good to go. So next we'll dive into the um, the Fathom. So come back for that one. We appreciate you here at uh, Clearview Outdoors. Um, once uh, once again, we thank God for all things. He is our Lord and Savior. And uh, without Him, I feel I could do nothing. Um, greatest man I've ever known, and I've yet to see his face. But one day I will. Come back with, join us at uh, Clearview Outdoors.